It's been called a hidden crime. FGM has been illegal in the UK for more than 30 years, but it's still a common cultural practice in many countries in Africa, parts of Asia and the Middle East. There are no definitive figures, but the British government has warned thousands are at risk and has committed to ending FGM worldwide within a generation. The issue of female genital mutilation is one on which I think we are all agreed across this whole house. It is an abhorrent, an abhorrent activity. It should not be taking place. But are the authorities taking the right approach to investigating suspected cases of FGM, especially where children are concerned? We've been told that excessive weights for the examination of children are causing unnecessary trauma and that children can be placed into child protection measures while inquiries are ongoing. The atmosphere changed in the house. It felt like the whole world was crumbling down on me. Newsnight has also heard concerns about the credibility of one of the country's leading FGM campaigners and healthcare professionals. Nearly two years ago, it became a legal requirement for healthcare professionals, social workers and teachers to report cases of FGM in children to the police. But there are concerns the way some cases are being investigated is harming children and their families. If a child is suspected of having been subjected to FGM, they should be physically examined by a specialist. In many cases, however, it is a final part of the investigative process and can take place months after an accusation is made when the child could already be on a child protection plan or in foster care. One reason we've been told is that police and social services often misunderstand the nature of the examination, believing it to be more intrusive to the child than it actually is. This is the letter um, for my middle child. And as it says there, there's no evidence of FGM. Yeah. Pregnant with her third child, this woman, we'll call her Emma, to protect the identities of her children, asked a question out of curiosity during a routine medical appointment after the midwife mentioned FGM. Emma told me she wanted to clarify what FGM was, but her question sparked an investigation. It was just curiosity, really, and who would be the best person to ask? It was the midwife. That same night, a police officer came to her door gave her leaflets and warned her about the practice. A year later, the same officer came back with social services. This time they said they had been informed she'd had the procedure herself and there were concerns it had been carried out on her daughters. Emma denied the accusations, but the girls were put on a child protection plan, a measure local authorities used to safeguard children and maintain oversight of the family before they'd even been examined. What happened over the next few months? The atmosphere changed in the house. I was in myself. I had just had a baby. I wasn't given time to recover. It felt like the whole world was crumbling down on me. And my children's behaviours changed in school. It was just like they had triggered a naughty behaviour and then that doesn't happen before. I needed an examination done on me and my children. And I knew that I hadn't undergone FGM. My children hadn't undergone any FGM and my children were fine and healthy. I hadn't hurt them in any way. Newsnight has been told that her story is not uncommon. Forward, a charity that works with families, told us they'd seen a child placed in foster care for eight months while waiting to be examined. She was found not to have had FGM but the delay caused her serious distress. They are calling for changes to be made. Using effect, you know, the right translators, ensuring that there is effective you know, um, support um, for families to get legal assistance because of the challenges with legal aid, ensuring that you know, families are examined on time and children are as well in a sensitive way and within the right environment. And do you think the way some investigations are being handled is letting families down? Oh yes. A lot of times what becomes a, a problem is possibly lack of training for professionals, effective training. 
there's a knee-jerk reaction from professionals when they hear FGM. They are so sometimes, I don't know whether it's terrified or um, wanting to make sure that something doesn't go wrong. So they really go in too, too, too hard. A 2016 study by experts at University College London Hospital showed children were waiting nearly two months on average to be referred for an examination. But there are cases of waits of over a year. In a Home Affairs Select Committee report two years ago, then committee chairman Keith Faz warned, while agencies play pass a parcel of responsibility, young girls are being mutilated every hour of every day. This barbaric crime, which is committed daily on such a huge scale across the UK, cannot continue to go unpunished. But I've been told by specialists from around the country that many cases they see are historic and they don't believe FGM is taking place in this country at anything like the same rate as some politicians have stated. There are three main specialist centres in the UK where children are examined for FGM, based in London, Birmingham and here in Manchester. Dr Catherine White of St Mary's Sexual Assault Referral Centre has seen more than 40 referrals since mandatory reporting came in. 14 of those cases were found on examination to have had FGM. So far we haven't noticed FGM in cases where the family have said no, the child hasn't had it. Of the cases that you've seen where you've identified FGM, how many of them occurred here in the UK? Uh, none. None. So where we've seen F evidence of FGM, the uh, children have been born outside of the UK and the history is that they had the FGM done outside of the UK. In the media we've been, um, we've been told that there might be thousands of mm. cases. Why do you think there's a discrepancy between those figures? I know that um, some of it might be that it's hidden and that it might be done and never come to light of the professionals. But I think if uh, certain types of FGM have, were being done at the rates that we were perhaps um, led to expect, we would be seeing cases coming through with infection or bleeding. They would be ending up in front of healthcare professionals and then being referred to us. And um, that just hasn't happened. These clinics provide very specialised care, but Newsnight has learnt that some children have been examined by people whose qualifications and experience have been called into question. Comfort Momo is a midwife and leading campaigner against FGM. She established one of the UK's first FGM clinics at Guy's Hospital and has recently retired from Guy's and St Thomas's Trust. She received an MBE for her work in women's health. But senior specialists have raised concerns to Newsnight about whether she's wholly credible, specifically when it comes to examining children for FGM. The Home Office and all the bodies that set the standards for the forensic examination of children all say that only doctors with the relevant qualifications and experience should examine children for FGM. But Comfort Memo has examined at least five children, despite not having the relevant qualifications. In a high-profile case, she testified that a child had had FGM. The judge described her report as a remarkably shoddy piece of work and worse than useless. He concluded the child had not undergone FGM. How do you feel about the verdict? A week later, in a separate court case, Comfort Momo was listed as a key expert witness for the prosecution in the trial of Daniel Sondama Sema, the first doctor in the UK prosecuted for allegedly carrying out FGM. Newsnight understands Comfort Momo was due to give evidence but was dropped just before the trial, although no reasons were given. A jury acquitted Dr Dharmasema after less than half an hour of deliberations. There are also suggestions that Comfort Momo may be exaggerating her professional qualifications. She has repeatedly described herself as Dr Momo but is not a qualified medical doctor. Instead, she has an honorary doctorate from Middlesex University. A university spokesperson confirmed to Newsnight that this does not enable her to use the title doctor. Newsnight put these allegations to comfort Momo, but she has chosen not to respond. Newsnight also approached the Nursing and Midwifery Council for comment, and they told us they were already investigating concerns raised about comfort Momo. 
We don't know whether this is connected in any way with our findings. Emma had to fight to get her children examined, but she says the struggle has had long-lasting effects on her and her family. The police officer said to me, if I hadn't had the examination taken for my children, I would have lost my children. My Shisha services would have taken them away. What impact has this had on you as a mum and your children? I didn't want to lose my children. It would have been so heartbreaking, so it gave me the strength to get them examined by a specialist that is trained to examine in that field, not anybody, any, any doctor or any GP. It should be somebody trained specifically for that. Protecting women and girls from FGM is crucial, but examinations need to be timely and carried out by qualified people. And more work should be done to save young girls from unnecessary distress. Mm -hmm.